Hear ye, hear ye, gather round for another edition of Young Kings Wrestling featuring the Summer Sound Board. As always, you can find us on most platforms streaming your favorite podcast episodes, including Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. If you're on the iTunes, leave us a review of the five-star kind. Subscribe to us on YouTube at YK Wrestling. Links to all the platforms and merchandise available at YKWrestling.com. Now, welcome back. Episode 207. Inside the Nuck If You Buckingham Palace. As always, I am the Thespian T.C. Fontaine, a.k.a. TCF Baby. Please, 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 for the love of God, say to Baby... Joined by King Reek, House of Havoc, first of his name. We back. Yet again, to talk some more wrestling. How you doing, sir? I'm a little aggy, but I'm cool. A little aggy. It's two weeks in a row now, man. Y'all listen. Yeah. Mm. And this this what happens. You take something we've enjoyed for so long. Mm-hmm. Three years to be exact. Yep three years in a couple weeks actually and just flip it upside down Mm -mm -mm. getting a double dosage i thought we got it all out our system last week but oh no we said we was gonna wait till friday see what's going on friday done passed now we here so we gonna we're gonna get to it man we're gonna talk about it we're gonna talk about what happened this week uh some bloodline stuff man if you don't know yeah you don't know what we referenced Oh man, which means I ain't tuned in last week, but that's okay. Go check out last week. We we was going ham. Yeah, we was going ham. It's not gonna be all right. Nah, cause uh, even a certain somebody, a certain somebody, who we've been saying, "Hey, fam, what's good with you?" for the last like two months now. Mm-hmm. It's been like two months. <laughs> It might be more than two months, but oh yeah, it's definitely been longer than that. All that and more on this week's edition of Young Kings Wrestling. But first, I want to say happy 50th birthday to hip hop. Hip hop turned 50 officially. The greatest culture in American history started with a back to school party in the Bronx. On August 11th, 1973, shout out to DJ Cool Herc. We wouldn't have this if it wasn't for DJ Cool Herc. Shout out to sure. him. Shout out to the Jamaicans. Mm-hmm. Shout out to them. If y'all been paying attention, like almost all the episode titles for us this year, either have been references to like hip hop albums or songs okay. or just like hip hop culture in general. Most of the most most of the, the soundboard, whether it's the sovereign soundboard or the spooky or the summer, whatever one, whatever gimmick is taking place during that time, got a lot of hip hop stuff on it. Yeah, for sure. So like hip hop has been a staple for our whole existence, pretty right. much. But like more so this year because this it's been calculated. The the episode title's been calculated. Real ones knew that hip hop was turning 50 this year. So, you know, you had to do our thing. So, shout out to Hip Hop's birthday. Uh, but last week, I forgot to mention it because we was just so damn agitated. Uh, last week was also our birthday on our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, our platform has been uh, nearing five years. It'll be five years in December. But we didn't launch the podcast for like nine months. So, yeah. yeah. It's only right that uh, we, we throw in a joint birthday party for both. Young Kings Wrestling and Hip Hop here on the show. So make sure y'all tune in next week, man, because next week going to be nothing but wrestling and hip hop. They said yeah. Bloodline and them might not show up on Friday. Bruh. So listen, we don't got to talk Ugh. about that next week, man. 
we just gonna have a party, man. Might have some special guests pop through. I heard the Sabi gonna gonna pop through eventually too. He said he might show up. I sent him the invitation. He said, you know what? I'll, and I, you know, I'll, I'll put a little pause in my vacation and, and show back up. Cause y'all the reason I'm on vacation right now. Y'all the reason I didn't been able to take a vacation. Shout out to Young Kings Wrestling. So he said, you know, we gonna we gonna stop through and do our thing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's a good time to do a little celebrating. I mean, towards the end of the year, uh. It's gonna be about my fifth year doing this all together. So I mean, it's because I, I first started right early t- twenty nineteen. So I mean, it's Ooh. that time is racking up. <laughs> it is man, damn, it's, it's really been five years since twenty eighteen. I remember like it was yesterday. Yeah, just like us getting started. I remember just all the stuff going on in wrestling that led up to Young Kings Wrestling like being a thing. Like Becky Lynch mm-hmm. became the man around this time. Like, yeah, we had the Planet Champion Daniel Bryan around this time. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was a it was a fun time. AW launched. Yeah. So that means like <sighs> that the first All In was this month five years ago. Right. That was when I was just like, you know what? I I'm I'm gonna shoot on All In for a little second. The very first one. Because that was when I realized, like, yo, I don't think I like indie wrestling for real. Because mm. I turned on All In late. Because, you know, it was difficult to find a stream. And, you know, folks ain't want to pay the money for it. Yeah, we, we know how it goes. Yeah. So we're trying to find a stream. So it took me a second. I find a stream. As soon as I turn it on, I see a bunch of inflatable penises. Oh, yeah. I was like, ooh, that was, that's what I should have known this shit wasn't, wasn't really for me like, <laughs> full time. But I did get to see Cody win and seeing Rey Mysterio was on the card and stuff. So it was it wasn't horrible. It was just like, I don't want to be greeted to what I'm thinking is supposed to be a big spectacular event to some penis costumes. Right. Some penis mascots. Yeah, when you, when you delve into indie wrestling, you find out some some weirdos in the bunch. <laughs> among other ironically, guys. the individual who introduced the penis costumes was one of the biggest weirdos of them all. So, yeah, you don't got to talk about that individual. We could talk no. about some more birthdays though. Uh, some birthdays in the wrestling business. Happy birthday to Marty Bell, Sable. Had a birthday this past week. Shout out to Sable. Mm-hmm. I would do the 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 cat noise. I'm not gonna do it. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Could have caught me on a better day. I might have did it. I say we don't need the attention that might attract. Facts. <laughs> uh, Shayna Baszler. Shout out to Shayna Baszler. Happy birthday to you. Mm-hmm. She was like 43. Uh, it's Google. Oh, so. it is Google. Shout out to all the wrestlers over the age of 40. Hold on. I'm, I'm about to pull up a tweet real quick. I'll she see. is 43. 43? I knew it was yeah. about that 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 big. Uh, I'm going I'm to pull up a tweet real quick because I got something else to address, but let me finish this real quick. Uh, happy birthday to Zach Gibson, a.k.a. Rip Fowler. And you probably mm. still don't know who the hell I'm talking about. Uh, the bald dude from Schism in NXT. Right, right, yeah. Formerly of Grizzled Young Veterans. I had Ooh. I still can't tell the two apart. I don't know who's who. Uh, Alexa Bliss, happy birthday to her! And uh, I don't know if we said it. I think we did, but congratulations on you uh, building a brand new human being inside of you. Mm, yeah. Congratulations, you and your husband. Wishing for a healthy pregnancy on that one. Indeed. Savio Vega, happy birthday to the OG. One of my favorite theme songs in wrestling history. From the Los Bariquas. Yeah. I have no idea what they were saying, but that shit slapped. Nope. <laughs> it slapped. Uh, happy birthday to the bare knuckle brawler Wade Barrett. How'd that sound? How was that? It was all right. It was kind of sorted. All right. Yeah. Uh, Spike Dudley. Happy birthday to Spike Dudley. And uh, this isn't a happy birthday, but party's over, Grandpa. Oh man, yeah. 
that's actually that that that's perfect. That's actually yeah, Artie's uh, over grandpa. That's uh that's at the top of my rumors list. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, let's 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 finish this off. Uh, this week in wrestling history, 1999, Y2J, Chris Jericho debut in the WWF, interrupted The Rock. Mm. Great promo, great pop in Chicago at the All-State Arena. I don't think it was called All-State Arena at the time. Nah. I don't remember what the hell it was called. But... Rosemont Center. My Chicago people, yeah, y'all, uh... let us know. Yeah. Y'all know, I don't know a lot better than we do. So, right. Uh, what happened else this week? Uh, 2002, Ron Killings, Ron the Truth Killer, aka R Truth, yes, sir, aka K Quick, won the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship, the 10 pounds of gold, the Ric Flair Harley Race belt, uh, became the first. And for uh, over 20 years, was the only black man to win this championship. Held it twice. Yeah. Currently, there is a black champion, which they say. Uh, Apparently. I don't uh, I don't think we really acknowledge that the same way that other people do. Nah, nah. Some, some call, people do. I call him the Fox News champion. Like some people say, oh, he's he's a black champion. We champion black wrestlers. <laughs> Anybody deserves a coon award, it is your ass boy. That's that's the belt he got. Yeah, I don't uh <laughs> the Fox News champion. That's that's what I got for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh 2010 and 2018 this past week, uh, we lost Lance Cade and Jim the Anvil Neidhart. They had me thinking Lance K was from Omaha for years. Found out this man was from Texas. Yeah, I mean that that makes sense, but it don't. I right, just say you from Texas. Like, why you gotta lie? And say you from Omaha. And well, it was I mean, fucked he... up because the first time I ever seen him before he debuted on TV was at a house show in Omaha. So I'm thinking, yo, he one of us. <laughs> he wasn't. <clears throat> Well, I mean, I was young, uh, out of touch when he first debuted him and uh, Trevor Murdoch. So uh, I, I naturally assume he had to be from somewhere down south. Omaha ain't down south. I'm going to let y'all know that right now. <laughs> oh, man. Let y'all know that right now. Where are we at on the Royal Address of Rumors? All right. So uh, I'm going to start off with Grandpa. <laughs> uh, so uh, most people know that uh, Terry and uh, Brutus Barber, the Beefcake, uh, they they had they had peas in a the pod. They like homies though. Yeah, well, and the, the stuff started breaking down over a couple of years. You know, oh, they, uh, they they start they started uh, they started beefing. Um, did not know that. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it wasn't. <clears throat> It happened like, like a couple years back. Like it, this hasn't been like a regular thing, but yeah, they they they've been they've been having some issues. And uh, Brutus's wife, they uh, she had this tweet that uh, she wanted the two of them to like kind of clear the air, squash the beef, and you know just just no one's saying what the issue is that they're beefing over. But uh, she's like, listen, this is this is getting silly. You want to try to get rid of it, you know, just get back to being on those, the same page. And uh, then she said, because uh, so she mentioned something about Terry saying that Brutus shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame and shit like that. So she's teasing that uh, she might be doing a little uh, something on TV, uh, a one or two part series, uh, which sounds to me like she might be airing some shit out about Terry publicly. Uh-oh. So, uh, yeah, That's interesting. Party's over, Grandpa. <laughs> it might be shit. It might be. Uh, yeah, we we gonna Styles P and J to kiss these rumors right quick. Uh, WWE and Endeavor. Do y'all like that? Do y'all like that? Mm. Hold on, real quick before I before I finish. Y'all like that Jada Kiss lad? 
Let me know. Was it good? Talk to me. Because I could just... <laughs> just do the real Jada Kids voice. Uh, WWE and Endeavor got some uh, some more news on the merger. Uh, looking looking about forty mm, ish days or so, possibly for yeah. that to to officially go through. Uh, recently we uh got some news on the new board members for the new company under the uh, holdings name TKO Group Holdings. Uh, on the WWE side, we got Vincent Kennedy McMahon, uh, Nick Khan. Steve Coonan and Nancy Tellum on the Endeavor side. We got Ari Emanuel. Uh, might be mispronouncing this gentleman's name, but Egon Durbin. That's a fire name. Egon oh, yeah. Durbin. Uh, Jonathan Kraft. I got a. Is he, might, is he one of the crafts? Like the crafts, oh, crafts? Oh. I'm going to let's Google it. We'll look it up in a second. Uh, Sonia so. Medina, uh, Mark Shapiro, and Carrie Wheeler. And uh, notably missing uh, was Triple H, Paul Levesque, who is uh, currently on the WWE board. Uh, also notably missing is uh, Dana White, who uh, was never on the UFC board at all hmm. or Endeavor. He's just the president and Triple H, you know, got his executive job, but uh, neither of them were on the board. People were mad Triple H wasn't on the board, and I feel like y'all had no idea why you guys were mad. Just want to be mad at something. Right. That's all it is. So, all right, so, so, uh, 40 there is a, day, 40 or so days on that. So, uh, there is a Jonathan Kraft who's the son of Robert Kraft. I don't think that's the same dude, though. Mm, okay. it, it don't say nothing about him being a part of that, uh, that group. Okay. That's fair. We can, uh, we can, uh, do a, do a deeper search on that. Cause he's on. the, because he's the president of the Patriots now. Facts. That is true. Oh, man. What other so, rumors you got, man? So, uh, the Dudley boys. Uh, Devon had a, an interview this week. And uh, first off, he was talking about his uh, health issues back in 2020. Because uh, I know we heard about this before previously. Because it looked familiar when I read it. But uh, had a stroke in 2020, and he was thinking he wasn't going to make it. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, you know, the stroke's a silent killer. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he had to go yes. to he had to go to rehab a couple different times to, you know, build back up, uh, work with his personal trainer. Then uh, a couple months after that, he had to go back surgery. You know, so he had a lot going on. Uh, with that being said, uh, it's September 9th is a uh, reunion of the Dudley boys on impact for the first time in seven years. So shout out to the, shout out to the hall of famers. They, they should be, I mean, whenever they done, they go in both hall of fames, the same thing with Victoria, you know, they already in both hall of fames, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sh- that's right. That's it right. was the first tag team in TNA okay. joint. And then they, they in WWE. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know. They went into. T- I tell you, I don't be watching TNA like that. They they was literally like the first tag team to go in. Yeah. See, I don't be paying. I think like sec- second or third class. Yeah. See, I don't be paying attention to what they do over there. I remember the BJ, but yeah. But yeah, which, Victoria which, for Hall of Fame too. Yeah. In case, in case y'all forgot. You know, yeah. We said it in a minute, time. but <laughs> we still on that time. <laughs> um. What else we got? Oh, uh, I mean, this ain't this ain't much, much but uh, Brandy Rhodes was also, I think she was talking to Chris Van Fleet, and uh, well, one she came out and just straight up, you know, announced the retirement. Uh, not like we didn't already, you know, know by this point he wasn't going to be doing anything. Uh, but she Damn. just they just clarified you open mic night. I guess so. I guess so. She just cleared it up that, you know, she's not going to be active. Um, <clears throat> something that was considered was uh, her and uh, Cody, you know, doing something with Becky and Seth, which I think would have been pretty cool. Uh, but, yeah, outside of that, not, nothing really going on. It was just, uh, you know, she's a new mom. It's been a little tough. So uh, she's going to focus on, you know, being 
supporting her man on the road, which yeah. listen, we ain't, we ain't gonna blame you. We understand. Yeah, yeah. She she back in goodwill because you know she ain't saying say nothing crazy nowadays. Oh yeah, we got the camera um, flash. It was all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we got y'all we got y'all back situated the right way. Um, and then uh, Bray, Bray Wyatt. Uh, we're talking about some illnesses, injuries. So the situation with Bray, you know, came out this week. Uh, a lot of people have been wondering what's going on with him. Apparently, the uh, illness that he had wasn't just career-threatening, it was life-threatening. Mm. Uh, weren't actual, you know, specifics on it, but the reason they kept saying in reports that, you know, they're taking their time with it, they're trying to uh, be patient and, you know, s- smooth this over is because that's how serious it was. That being said, uh, we're, we're getting closer. Uh, we could be seeing him in a month. Maybe a month and a half. So, you know, we, we we got to the end of that road. But and honestly, it reminded me a lot of the Keith Lee situation mm-hmm. where, you know, a lot of people were saying, like, oh, what's going on and where he been at. And then he had to come and tell you niggas, listen, I almost died, you know, and uh, had to be careful. And then so. he started capping for some reason. <laughs> I still don't know what that was. I mean, I know what it was about, but kind of unnecessary. He, Hey, but Bray, yeah. Bray Wyatt, take your time, man. Get healthy. Don't rush yeah. nothing. Yeah, for sure. Don't rush nothing. Pray to God you don't drop that shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just take your time, dog. Right, man. This wrestling ain't going nowhere. It damn sure ain't. Uh, let me, I'm let not. Me, let, me, let me let me let me let me get a bar in, son. Uh, let me, yeah, let me get some. Uh, Bobby Roode. What happened to that boy? Because mm-hmm. you know, we wonder what happened to Bray. We wonder what happened to Bobby Roode. Uh, I mean, it sucks, but looking looking like uh, quietly, quietly uh, easing his way out of the ring into a uh, backstage producer role. Uh, reportedly, him and Nick Aldis uh, worked Raw and SmackDown this week as producers. I uh, didn't didn't notice any of them on screen. It was a lot of shit going on, but uh, yeah. Shout out to him. Hopefully it works out. Hopefully uh, he can find his way back into the ring and retire properly. But, you know, yes, it's a lot better option for you uh, to extend your life and everything. So, yeah, good luck in listen, this uh, listen, this new endeavor. Jason Jordan is making a, a hell of a second act. Facts. Post, post in ring. So, I mean. And he didn't have a quarter of the career that Bobby Roode had. Yeah, right. Yeah, Jason Jordan was around for a cup of coffee, literally. Mm-hmm. And that was just over and done with before we knew it. Uh, uh I, I was I was gonna report on this until uh till I saw who whose quote it was attached to because <laughs> the streets were saying that both Brock and Roman got injured at SummerSlam. And I'm like Oh that that nigga don't know nothing. I'm about to say, I'm about to say it. I'm like, that was odd. And then of course I saw who who said it, and then what uh, publication they said it with, if you want to call it that. And I said, okay, all right, fuck out of here. I don't want to hear nothing about that. Um, Because you know how easy it is that can't nobody, like, because even if Brock is hurt, we don't know that for sure. And this dude was going away and taking some time off anyway. So it was like, you can't really debate it. He think he's slick. He not. Yeah, I just, I I can't, I can't deal with that. Who means? Um. I, I maintain that they they booked him for fast lane. That was the last thing I heard, because um, now he's talking about he won't be out until till like the Royal Rumble. I, to hell with that! Like, go go somewhere, please. Yeah. Um. And the last thing is about Mick. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, let, let 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 me let me take let the reins on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that, please. Let me take I, the I, reins on this. I, I love Mick Foley, but damn it, man, the last couple of years. I need somebody to check on him and his takes. But, so uh, let me yeah. let me kick this off. So uh, as we talked about last week, Ronda Rousey lost to Shayna Baszler, and uh, I was at Pizza Hut, bro. I went into Pizza Hut. I had on my my Sasha Sasha and Bianca shirt from SummerSlam that I copied. Mm. From, you know the little mini store. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm not gonna get into details on that. But yeah. <laughs> uh, I had that shirt on, so like the dude working the Pizza Hut, he seen my shirt, 
you know, somebody just like start wanting to talk wrestling with me when I got a shirt on, I just be like, God damn it. Right. <laughs> but but this dude, he he wasn't bad. He wasn't bad. It was cool. Uh he seen my shirt. He was like, Did you watch the did you watch the SummerSlam that just happened the other day? I was like, Yeah. This dude was like, Man, that Rhonda and Shayna, me and him just started both shooting on how horrible that match was. Like we was like this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, absolutely. Uh, so after she lost to Shayna Baszler, she went and posted on Instagram. Rhonda was like, uh, you were the reason I got into this business. Now I have no reason to stay. Right. Is she for real? Think she for real? Kodak Black, I hope so. Not, uh, right. That That's all I thought was, please be serious. Please yeah. be serious. Me, I was, I was just like, good riddance if that's the case, man. Uh because I'm going a, I'm to a say something real quick that, listen, the, the whole Mick thing, uh, Mick Foley hops on Facebook, and I'm assuming just out of reaction to that. Uh, I, I didn't see the whole post, but I did see a quote that he said. He said, without Ronda, it's highly unlikely WWE would have featured a women's match as the main event at WrestleMania in 2019. And I can't really argue with that because I feel like it's true. But when you look at where Becky Lynch was at that time in late 2018, yeah, it might have still happened regardless. Like she was on fire that much, and we, you know, it, it was. I maintain we might not have had to push for the Evolution pay per view without Ronda, and I think that for okay. sure would be the case. At yeah. least not so soon. Like I think it's something they could have had like a year later, but. I can't fully agree, but I, I can also can't argue with it either. Uh, but I will say this, and I'll let you get, you know, what you got to say uh, out of Mick Foley real quick. Let me say, Ronda ain't put nobody over the whole time she was gone. Good riddance. I will elaborate further on that. Uh, just say what you got to say. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I can say personally, uh having been at WrestleMania, uh, number one, Ronda Rousey got no response from the crowd. <laughs> okay. When she I know showed, like 1 a.m. though, bro. And, well, but this, this, this is so I'm going with this. Because, yeah, we was all, we was all tired. We saw gas because this was the last WrestleMania that was a full one-day thing with like seven hours of wrestling. So, yeah, the fatigue was kicking in. Uh but that being said, they still got up in that one last hurrah when Becky showed up at mm-hmm. 1 a.m. So it's like to say that Ronda was the only reason we got the women's main event, that's disingenuous. It really is. Because Becky was the biggest star in the company at the time, male or female. Yeah. Like nobody got that same kind of reaction or response from the crowd week over week. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Maybe if it had not been from Ronda, maybe we get a different main event, possibly. But you know, there was other there was other ways for that to to go. You could have found a way to make it happen. Um, Ronda was just the catalyst. I think Ronda was really. This is a different conversation for a different day. But truthfully, I believe that Ronda was Stephanie's weapon to push the agendas that she had for the company that she couldn't anywhere else at any point point in time. The Evolution pay per view, the you know, the, the women's main event of mania, like mm-hmm. all that stuff. Like that was her ammo to say, listen, we're doing this and we're doing this this year. You know what I'm saying? All of that happened within a 20, uh, 12 year or uh, 12 month span. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but listen, it, it, it works. But listen, Charlotte was there. And I know people say all the time, like, oh, I don't, don't want to see. If you put Charlotte and Becky as a main event, it's not going to do the same, but again, the caliber of stars and the nature of where Becky was at the time, it's like, it, it's not something that you could just dismiss out of, out of, out of context. Um, but uh, listen, Mick, I, I don't know, man. I think I think Mick is just trying to, to be where he feels the wind is blowing lately. And oh, yeah, this is not the, fr- that's how I was being for a minute. Yeah, it's like uh, for a couple years now, man. These, these takes he's been having is just like the the attempt to at political correctness and just 
being on the quote unquote right side, like bro, come on now. I I know I know a nigga trying to get some money when I see it. (laughs) That's all that is. Like man, we we don't we don't need to keep trying to be you know spokesperson out here. Like I I I appreciate I appreciate the person one of the one of the nicest guys I ever met in the business. Uh, Probably never heard anybody say a bad thing about Mick Foley. Like I think. the worst yeah. thing I've heard a wrestler or a fan or anybody say about Mick Foley is that he's notoriously cheap. Yeah. Hey, look, I ain't mad at him. Yeah, I ain't mad at that either. <laughs> it's like, Somebody listen, in this business got to be cheap like that. <laughs> what I'm saying, like, listen. Can't all be Ric Flair. No, oh, Chad, Chad Johnson, cheapest man i ever seen. Bro. But he's smart. <laughs> hey, Chad really, like, he legit fly spirit. Yeah. That's crazy to me. It, it really is. He All got that millions. money. I'm like, listen, <laughs> if, if if it worked for you, yeah. you know what I'm saying. But yeah, you like I, it, I, just, I love it. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm just like, I'm. Listen, somebody got to take somebody got to take your social media from him because it's like he he begging to be, you know, that good guy in every situation. It's like I'm on I'm on the right side whenever some shit controversial blows up. I, we don't need that, bro. Just I agree. You can say what you got to say without having some kind of agenda attached to it. Facts. And uh, let me circle back to what I said about how Rhonda, if she's gone, she ain't put nobody over at all. Uh, time time will tell with Shayna after, you know, Shayna got that win. It's, it's too soon. I mean, she looked okay on Monday. So we'll see with that. Uh, Becky didn't, didn't put Becky over. Like, mm-hmm. even though Becky pinned her in the main event of Mania and won all the belts, yeah, she was, was gonna win. Yeah, she was gonna win that match regardless. It don't matter. Right. Like even Ronda, like, and, and it's the thing that bothered me. I'm gonna take two. It was three championships that changed hands. Technically four, but three world, three world championships changed hand at WrestleMania. Yep, all three. Seth beat Brock. Kofi beat Daniel Bryan. Becky beat Ronda and Charlotte. Now, go and watch when Seth beats Brock Lesnar. Do you see Brock Lesnar at any point? No. When Kofi pins Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan immediately rolls out of the ring and gets the fuck out of the way because that's not his moment. When when Becky pinned Ronda, what did Ronda do? Stood stood up immediately and Uh stayed in the ring for a good, like, 20 seconds as Becky celebrating just, like, trying to get the attention on her and take away from Becky's moment, that is not putting somebody over. That's not putting your opponent over. You've been around her for a year. You've been champion for, I think she was champ for, like, eight months at the time. Yeah. Taking away that woman's moment wasn't cool. Uh, Charlotte Flair beat Ronda at Mania in Dallas and then beat her on SmackDown in, like, December. That's Charlotte Flair. She had nothing to gain from beating Ronda Rousey at all. Yeah. Like, and then, you know, Liv Morgan beat her. You know, I saw that one at Money in the Bank. That didn't really help Liv at all. And, you know, because then she dropped it right back to Ronda. I mean, not right away, but she she got the win over at SummerSlam. And then we circled back at, like, Extreme Rules or something. Trying to do that hardcore legend shit. Yeah, it just it wasn't hitting. It wasn't hit. Like she doesn't help live out at all. I remember she had like this quick ass match versus Ruby. And then mm-hmm. she wanted to give Ruby more time on like the next episode of Raw. Yeah. And so they got more time. They got like seven minutes or so. Like Ruby didn't even gain any momentum out of that at all. No. So but like I, who I, is Ronda Rousey helped for it? But I think that that's and I don't like to, I don't like to make it one of those one of them talks. But I think that's just a testament to who she really is. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, she always she been a sore Terry. loser. She basically, she always been a sore loser. That goes yes. back to UFC. But it's like you just you don't want to be viewed as weak. Uh, the the mania thing it was slightly different because. I mean, we was all looking like, wait a minute, what? That's the it. That's the end. 
And it come to find out later on, there was a different finish that was supposed to happen. The ref didn't know there was miscommunication. So part of that, her jumping up was like, yo, what's going on? Oh, um, maybe kick out, bro. Yeah. But it's just like, I think you got to take it for what it is. Like, you know, when people show you who they are, believe them. Uh, I don't think anything really changed in, in terms of that aspect of her character from being an actual fighter to a professional wrestler. So to, to piggyback off what you're saying, I, I don't think, I don't think this was a surprise to anybody. I think she really could be female Terry, truthfully, because she'll say, like, I want to help the women's division out and stuff like that. Uh, I want to do this, that, and the third. You know, their agenda was all about pushing the la- the most recent one, was pushing the tag team, the women's tag team division. Oh, we want to help the women's tag team division out. And, you know, we want to push to push the win the championship. She did say that. But y'all yeah, won the championships. You put one tag team over. Mm-hmm. Tag team the tag team division is no better. In fact, we're talking about it being cursed. Cause right. the tag teams either broke up, left the company, or they're hurt. Shout out to Sonia. Best wishes. Speedy yeah. recovery. Um but yeah, this is this is nothing that you really said you wanted to do occurred. You got you got evolution, and again, I I chalked that up to Stephanie having her to push it. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, what did you really have? You didn't do anything that the momentum that Becky carried couldn't do by itself. Truthfully, I agree. So, good reading, Saranda. We telling Mick Foley to stay off Facebook, please. And uh, please, love a guy, Marty Janetti need to stay off Facebook too. <sighs> yeah. We watched it. Uh, I, I seen it. You ain't seen it yet. But the, yeah, uh, gotta, the dark gotta, side of the ring with Marty Jannetty. Uh, Brutus Beefcake told Mans he need to stay off Facebook. Mm-hmm. Al Snow told Mans he need to stay off Facebook. Jesus. Hey, Marty Jannetty might be the biggest cap artist in wrestling history. And that includes Terry and Vince Russo. Damn. Mm-mm-mm. The fact that the episode was titled The World According to Marty Janetti. Right. Which means like, yo, this nigga be lying sometimes. So you gotta take what he said with a grain of salt. But this is what he said. This this is how he recollect all the stories. You remember when they told us uh he told us he killed a guy when he was 13? Right, yeah. They talked about that. They talked about that. They actually uh, he talked about how it was at a bowling alley when he was 13. The dude, you know, tried to sexually assault him uh, behind the building, and uh, he made a guy disappear. And they even visited. They said, you know, because, you know, Marty a Capper, they even mm-hmm. visited the bowling alley where this apparently took place. This man apparently said it was a, a quote-unquote storyline to build his name so he can get bookings again. Ain't nobody booking Marty Janetti in 2020. Ain't no way in hell. So who knows for real? It might it might have been real. It might have not been real. Marty Janetti been on a lot of shit. So could be I mean, cap, could not be cap. Let's say that's putting it mildly. Yeah. Uh, but he he went back on Facebook again after the episode aired uh, to address that murderer claim, and he mm-hmm. says, "Okay, I just need to understand." How the because he censored it out. He said, How the can you call me a murderer if I was 13 and the dude was trying to rape me? And even then it wasn't intentional. It's called getting this ninja off of me. Now, first of all, Marty, do you know what ninja is substituted for? I'm about to say, yeah. <laughs> uh, We're gonna let that yeah. slide for now. But yeah. Photo Phil, like. Is this, is this a storyline or not? Is this real or not? Is it Uchi Wally Wally? Or is it one <laughs> mic? Yeah, I need the answer, Sway. This is this is not this is not a good look. Even Roy there, Jones there, was forced to lean back. There is there, there there's capping and there's unnecessary capping. This was just unnecessary. Because we're not even why is even talking about this anymore? That's you talking about this. You using Vice's platform to bring up this shit that didn't make sense to begin with, and you trying to say it's part of a wrestling angle. Like, 
at some point, I, just let the shit go. Yeah, I guess the producers are trying to clarify it too. Is I mean, outside of that, like, when's the last time you heard something about Marty Janetti? This shit got coverage on TMZ. Like, the the only the only times I hear something about Marty Janetti is uh, him getting in some kind of trouble, him on Facebook, be, you know, on, on some on some shit on social media, you know, getting high or drunk on shit. Like, I don't hear nothing positive, so that. I'm not looking into it like that. Nah. At the end of the day, it's like I, I, I'm I'm one of those people that like listen. I hope nothing, nothing terrible happens, but I'm not sitting up here watching and saying like, "Oh man, this such and such happened with him." This is what he been doing, man. Like we 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 saw we saw Sean finally stop the cap and tell the truth about his life. Right. Back in the day, like, listen, I was doing X, Y, and Z with Marty back in the day. He ain't nothing changed. Marty trying to Marty trying to get everything it's, it's worth for since, you know, Sean left him in obscurity. Marty did say that Sean hit him up around the time, like, he last came back in, like, 05. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said Sean, that. yeah, he said Sean hit him up and was, like, inviting him to this uh, Christian retreat camp. Yeah. And he talked about how, like, this the purest he's felt in years and everything. And he went back and came back for the tryout match when the Rockers had a – I don't remember who the Rockers faced. But that was on Raw. And they was looking good. I think it was La Resistance. And, yeah, uh, it was something like that. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah, that's right. It was La Resistance. So, yeah, it was looking good. Both of them was looking like they ain't lose a step as a tag team. Marty didn't lose a step individually. I think uh, – I, I do want to say Marty Jannetty had a match with Shawn Michaels. Around, I mean, I said Shawn Michaels. Kurt Angle around this time. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was one so. of the bars in Sexy Kurt. Yeah, yeah. That was one of the uh, – yeah, after Sexy Kurt. And then he said, I can I can do anything better than Shawn Michaels. And so he wrestles Marty Jannetty, all this shit. Yeah. yeah. So shout out to Marty Jannetty for that time. But then he right back into the BS. So. Yeah. And then, then a year later, when Vince was having that feud with Sean, he had Marty Jannetty in the Kiss My Ass Club. Oh yeah, he did come back for that. Mm-hmm. He got more chances than anybody else in wrestling history, right? More, they even said that in the doc. It's like he got more chances than Sheik did. <laughs> he might have got Ooh, more chances man. than Gold Dust. Gold Dust has been in WWE like eight times. Shit. That's a fact. That's crazy, Marty. It really is. We we got to do better, fam. We got to do better. Mm-mm-mm. Where we at? We, let's talk about Monday Night Raw. Uh, I I didn't uh, watch NXT yet. I might still watch it. Still need to watch Buddy and Andrade. I heard that was some heat. Man, oh, I I say I said so many times that I think it's time to elevate Buddy. I maintain that yet again, cause damn, and this I, I'll give kudos to the uh, almost school white. Um, one collision is always fire, as far as I'm concerned. Like that, it's just on I'm a terrible night. That. Yeah, yeah, it really is. If you place that anywhere else, I'm tapping into that regularly. Um, but one thing I will give to Anthony and his company, they will give you exactly what you want. Right off rip. You don't got to wait all night. You know what I'm saying? When Kenny and Brian Danielson was on the card, first match out. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is like they do that with a bunch of different matches. So when I heard this was on the card, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to tell y'all so- why they do that, though. <laughs> Ain't nobody uh, trying to stick around the whole two hours to see all that other shit. Where they, I mean, the shit you want to see the most, just put it at the top of the show. That That, that, that is true. That is true. But yeah, first match out, they got right to it. They didn't waste no time. They was just going. I mean, they just let loose. Something about these two and their counterparts just they just put on some fire. Because Charlotte and Rhea, to me, got a candidate for match of the year at Mania, mm-hmm. and these two just tear the house down every time they. And Andrade had just come off injury when they first had a match, so that was like okay. We could build off of that. He needs some time to, you know, get back to, you know, where he was at. Now, 
bro, forget about it. They they could be in, in, the, in the world title picture as far as I'm concerned. Like, they could really be doing it like that. So, I mean, it, it's, it's about that time. They That match wasn't even that long, but that shit was up there. It was a heat for a mask, a mask. Oh, the Lasombra yeah. mask. You got, you yeah, that okay. that, <laughs> that 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 that's all it was for. It was for a mask. Mm. Okay. So I'm saying, like, if we could do it for that, I mean, there, there, there's more than enough space opportunities, as far as I'm concerned. Hey, I'm with it. I'm with it. Uh, but I did see on Dynamite there was a promo with the Adam Cole. Oh, you know, Roger yeah. Strong. Yeah. Who told y'all to give Roger Strong a microphone? Better yet, yeah, Roger it. Strong. Why he accept the microphone? I don't. I don't get it. Man. And why, like every time somebody got some beef in this company, is is because it's like some middle school shit. They're like, oh, I thought you're not my friend for real. Mm-hmm. It's like every few in AEW. What's good with that? I don't know, man. Y'all, like, y'all motherfuckers is like forty. You mean to tell me? Adam Cole can't have no other friends. It's a grown ass man. Yeah, it, 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 the whole situation been suspect when you ask me. Uh, honestly, Roddy would have been better just staying in the Indies or whatever he was doing before he signed. Um, you gotta get that bread. I don't blame you. I mean, I don't, but it's just like, man, what was the what was worse? Or what was going to be, you know, uh, a better a better option for you than doing this coming out being the fucking crybaby? You know what I'm saying? He was trying to be leader of Diamond Mind, but we know Roddy Strong can't lead shit. But even that, you know, I could I could stomach better than this shit. Put that man back with with Stoke. Oh man! Oh, oh man! Listen, Stoke I'm basically like Samoa Joe's Tupac. At this point, yeah, got that man that. hostage. <laughs> but no, yeah, yeah I, I might uh, you know what? What time is it, man? Collision like a couple hours away from airing, so I might tap in if I remember. But you know, yeah. all the other shit, and this this was gonna hurt Collision because it's August, which means it's about to be fall, which yeah. means football is gonna be on all day Saturday, mm-hmm. and, and that's gonna hurt them, yeah. especially on a nice NFL air. Yep. NFL air on Saturday sometimes too, so that's gonna hurt them. That's why it's not good. Which is like, man, just let Collision, Collision, and Dynamite swap, swap them out. Like, well, let I the mean, you got, that be on Collision, be on Dynamite. That's perfect. But it'll like, you got you got night games for college football every year or every yeah. week. Big so night. So it's games like, too. yeah. So like, listen, Ohio State playing. I ain't paying attention to you. I'm sorry. Nice. <laughs> like, like. Nebraska got a couple night like games that's gonna air the same exact time as Collision. Exactly. It's just so it's it's like... WWE era pay per view once a month, same time as Collision. Guess who getting watched? Well, you're right. <laughs> it's My the God. same way. Like so, that's gonna hurt them. But you know they they should still just put out a good product. You know. Yeah. People want to yeah. see it. They want to see it. It's it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Don't don't look at the numbers and start thinking. Oh, I gotta drastically change the formula. Like. We've seen the tragic end of some shit like that before. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but uh, elsewhere, uh, I think I said I didn't watch NXT either, so I can't really tell you what went on on NXT. Seen, uh, I seen Trick Williams was with like Drew Gulak and some other niggas, like getting into it with so. them. So I'll check that out. Uh, but yeah. Monday Night Raw, we kick off Monday Night Raw with Cody Rhodes came out to talk SummerSlam and Brock Lesnar. He gets interrupted by the world heavyweight champion Seth. Am I bad? Bit my tongue. Seth <laughs> freaking Rollins. They start to challenge one another. Uh, even after Cody said a couple weeks ago he doesn't want to ever face Seth Rollins again. Seth Rollins got a belt. But then Cody said, you know what? That's not the belt I want. Whatever. They started to challenge one another and then got interrupted by the judgment day. And uh some squabbles, some hands were thrown. Sami Zayn, this motherfucker. <laughs> Yet again, uh, once again, 
gets involved in the business of the hottest faction in the company. And Something just like last time, got his ass cooked. He got his ass cooked. Hey, he got cooked. Adrian, you didn't go down like that, huh? He got cooked. So Cody and Seth, they not getting along. They're like, you know. You know. seen his elbow, though? It was, it was it fucked up for real? He had that. It looked, remember when Cena had that, that injury on the elbow? Uh-huh. Or whatever. It looked just like that. Yikes. Well, if, if you shoot hurt, get well soon. But if it's a work, I'm laughing at you because you, know, you shouldn't be getting involved in people's business like that. Oh, you didn't yeah, learn yeah, last I'm... time, apparently. So Cody and Seth, they not even messing with each other for real like that. Like, man, listen, we, yeah. we at work. We got to work together. It's whatever. But listen, I don't fuck with you like that. Right. Cody was like, shit, you need a nigga. What's up? They need another partner regardless. They got a job to do. So uh, Shinsuke Nakamura got a got a win over Bronson Reed earlier in the match, uh, earlier in the night. And, you know, listen, I need to stop putting Bronson Reed on my TV. I don't pay attention whatsoever whenever he's on. <laughs> Shinsuke beat him, though. And uh, Shinsuke was backstage. He stepped in. It was like, yo, I can I can be you guys' partner. What's up? So they get Shinsuke, and uh, we had a match. After the match, though, Shinsuke let Seth Rollins know how he really felt. Exactly. I want that motherfucking belt, family. So Shinsuke and Seth, that should be good. That should be decent. Uh, speaking I of, know. yeah. Speaking of folks getting title shots, Chad Gable, he get another shot at Gunther in the Intercontinental Championship. Ooh. And, uh, Gunther just passed up Pedro Morales this week. Mm-hmm. So he had the second longest reign of all time. He uh last week it was 36. So yeah. he do the math on that. It's 31 as of no, it's not. It's 30. Can't I can't do the math on that. <laughs> uh it's 30 as of when we're recording. So we're a month away. Yeah. Officially, a, a full month it. away. Chad Gable not going to beat Gunther before that month is up. But I did not forget what Gunther and Ludwig Kaiser said the week after he won the belt. He said, no American will ever hold this championship again. Now, outside of Cody Rhodes, who is as American in this company like Chad Gable? I mean, listen, he's an Olympic gold medalist. Literally, you know. You're not a gold medalist, uh, but he was in the Olympics. Well, yeah, yeah. He was, he's, he honestly, they're kind of patterning him almost step for step after, after Kurt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like came in, already had the natural talent because of wrestling in the Olympics. And the only thing about him was working his character and fleshing out, you know, that, that other side of it. And now with the whole uh, Alpha Academy with Otis, like that's been shining through. So now we can just like, insert wherever we want to put him because i mean i know it was his hometown but damn like they came alive when they when they saw it when as soon as they announced the match i'm like okay there's only one winner for this yeah and lord only knows like this is gonna be this is gonna be one of them the matches on the short list for for you know for the year when they when they put that on yeah i, I can't wait for that one i actually i said it on twitter i was like Whenever this match happens, is I already put it on my match of the year candidate list. It ain't mm-hmm. even happened yet. Yeah, I just know they. I thought the last match they had was good, and that was only like five minutes. So like, imagine they get some more time and really go at it. Yeah, it's Man, already on the list. Put it on. Listen, put it on the PLE because. Oh yeah, I I could tell you already. It's that's not gonna be a, a deep card outside of yeah. like one or two matches. So you might as well give them the max time you can on a PLE to up that show a little bit. I agree. And then uh other notable thing that happened on Raw this past week, the return of former WWE champion Kofi Kingston and a New yes. Day back. Yes, a New sir. Day back. Unfortunately, I had to uh witness uh the three musty tears <laughs> yet again on my TV. <laughs> Tired of them. Oh man, Yo. on my TV, fam. Hey, hey, listen, listen. Shout out to to Titus for saying what we've been saying for weeks already, months even. 
Oh, uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> what Titus says? Cause oh, you didn't hear that? Oh, it was like I don't. I think it was last week. Might have been a week before. Uh, but yeah, he, they they came out. They had that. I think it was with um with the Alpha Academy. They had that that whatever it is. Uh, Viking something match. Mm-hmm. Basically, there's no DQ. Uh, but he was talking about them. He's like they they big, they sweaty, they musty. <laughs> like, <laughs> was he on commentary? Yeah, I'm like, oh, oh all right, y'all. In. See, see, when I when I tell y'all, I tune out of people that I don't want to see. I tune out. Mm-hmm. I had no idea. Titus been on fire on commentary this year. I ain't gonna lie. Oh yeah, he was a star of WrestleMania, in my opinion. <laughs> Call the police, please. Yo. Yeah, get keep them boys off my TV and and uh and Valhalla too. Yeah, the musty queen. Yeah, keep all of them stinking up my TV. But shout out to the new day, man. They look good. Kofi. I seen mm-hmm. uh Kofi like had a progress video of his injury, like show when the injury happened, and then yep. like you see like how swollen this dude's whole ankle was, and then just like gradually getting back to, to form. So good to see him back. Hell yeah. And uh get them boys the titles again, man. Might as well. I mean, listen, if Kev and Sammy are hurt, right. that's your opening right there. Some black people got to win something, so shit. <laughs> Put them versus the, the business profits or whatever they being called now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about that. Which yeah. I, got a, I got a theory about that, too, honestly. Oh, let's, uh, let's talk about it when we talk about SmackDown. SmackDown <sighs> was uh, kind of mid this week, man. You want to know why SmackDown was made? I'm going to tell y'all why SmackDown was made. Kevin Patrick, the lead commentator on SmackDown now. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a be, be honest, right? Because when I first saw that, I'm like, oh, Over fucking Cole? Fan. Right. But I get it at the same time, too. Because they... The sink or swim, man. Yeah, they, they really, they go and all like, listen... Guys here, let's do what we can for him. And to be honest, this takes a little bit of work off of Cole's plate so he don't have to lead the show both weeks yeah. in a row or both uh, two times a week now. You just be like, listen, you got the legend sitting right next to you. You know what I'm saying? This is your time to shine. If you can't do it with the man sitting right next to you, then you can't you can't do this shit. I'm sorry. Man, Michael Cole done called three shows in the last six days. That man tired, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, I, and I think I think he do like producing for NXT if I'm not mistaken as well, but I might be oh. wrong on that. But man, Cole Cole was looking sleepy. Right, old, old boy been there for a whole year, still ain't got the hang of his job. Got Michael Cole having to do extra traveling. Yeah, that's crazy. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I we we oh, all done man. been at a job and they didn't put us with somebody to, to shadow us doing what we doing. Cause they can't get the hang of the job. Don't we all hate that? We yeah, all been in that position before. Hell like, yeah. I mean, the new person, the new person, different. Like, you helping a new person out, that's different. They don't know nothing. Like, why you putting me with this dude that's been here this whole time, helping me, giving him pointers and shit, and coach him up? Yeah, like, you've been here long enough. <laughs> you know who didn't need help, Byron? Hell no. He got the hang of that quick. Quick, mm-hmm. I'm just saying, y'all, y'all didn't make them switch jobs for what reason? I don't know, but uh, SmackDown it was it was kind of mid, like you know, SmackDown mid when you kick it off with Charlotte versus Oscar, and I don't really care that much because mm-hmm. it was like Marshawn Lynch. You know why I'm here? I'm here to follow up on this bloodline stuff. Exactly. We waited to the end of the episode for that. Uh, what was the best thing that happened on SmackDown before the Bloodline stuff? With Ray winning the U.S. title, and I'm confused about that. See, as a thing, like I'm not, I'm not crazy about you know this either. To be honest with you, like I kind of want to give DJ Paul Peasant again. I really do. Okay, because like I mean. Austin Theory. I, I like Austin Theory. You can't get me to say a bad word about Austin Theory. And honestly, I don't I don't think they can get y'all to say a bad thing about Austin Theory 
and be genuine about it. Cause like, do y'all even know why y'all don't like kid? Well, no, they don't. But that's part of my problem. Y'all get impressions is, on Twitter. That's why. Y'all well, buy that, that, y'all buy blue checks. It, y'all, it, need, it, y'all need y'all need the revenue sharing. <laughs> is that what it is? Like it's honestly, it's it's part of the problem I have because one, y'all y'all don't know why y'all dislike him, but two, we already were saying how much like this title reign is kind of fizzling out. And it's like he needed something to, to get this going again. We we just we were just getting sour on whatever he was doing because they weren't they weren't really trying with him. Like yeah. we had we had gotten to a point where we thought mid card titles were getting you know the shine they needed, but we hadn't really seen Austin Theory in any important capacity since Mania. So and it's honestly, like, like Austin you, Theory has been on a slow decline since Vince stepped down. Like. Exactly. So you had multiple different avenues. I was thinking L.A. Night. We didn't go that route. Yeah. You had Santos. I said Santos was fine. We still that's still progression. Mm-hmm. But then you call an audible and say no, no, no. Put Ray there. Why? Yeah, like the if, only way if he didn't get hurt for real a couple weeks ago. Like if, if he was supposed to win a couple weeks ago, and then they had to stop the match and everything. Okay, I understand if you want to, you know, still go with your original plan because they had a T-shirt design and everything ready for Rey Mysterio immediately after he won. They just exactly. dropped the link. So, like, I get yeah. it. Like, he's a Hall of Famer. You get, you know, getting that brand money, somebody, probably Nick Khan or someone, called for Rey Mysterio to win the belt. But, like, if if it was a work when he got hurt a couple weeks ago, then what was the point of doing all this? Right. Like, is it so, like, from my theory, from the very beginning, once the LW all got back together, or even when, when Santos was, like, coming around, showing love to Ray Mysterio, I was like, Ray, don't trust him. Yeah. So it's like, is it going to lead to Santos showing his true colors sooner than later? That, that's the only way. You know, I understand. Can, yeah, that's the only way I'll get us a pass. If that's where we're going, that's the only cop out I'm giving them. Outside of that, what do we do this for? You didn't accomplish anything with this at all. It was just stupid. Because what you about to do with theory next, and yeah, it's right. a whole lot of shit going on. Uh elsewhere, I get happy. I get excited whenever Edge come back. Yep. And we got mm, about an hour or so into the show. And Edge shows up. I had no idea Ed if he was scheduled or if he was showing up or what. Like, did they announce Edge was going to be on SmackDown? No, I don't think so. I don't remember that. So it was a genuine welcome surprise. Every time Edge is back, I'm excited. Like, we're in Canada. So you might as well show up, Edge. And then Edge came out there, and, man, I've never wanted an Edge segment to end so bad <laughs> in my life. Because I'm just like, all right, fam, I don't care what y'all talking about. Like, I was shocked to find out him and Sheamus never interacted in a ring before. Yeah, when he said that, I'm like, what? I was like, hmm. I started, you know, calculating in my mind. Like, Sheamus came up to the to the main roster in, like, 09. He was in ECW at first. And then he goes on Raw, wins the title from John Cena. That was mm. stupid at the time, in my opinion. I hated that. But whatever. <laughs> Edge... Didn't Edge come back in, like, 2010? So, like, Edge wasn't even active when Sheamus debuted. And then they was on different shows, and then by early 2011, Edge was gone. So, like, it made sense they hadn't interacted, but it was just shocking to me. Uh, So, you know, Sheamus comes out there, and damn it, I I wanted that promo to end so (laughs) badly. I'm looking forward to the match, though. We're getting Edge and Sheamus for the first time next week in Toronto, so that should be good. It's definitely gonna slap. Like I, I'm, I'm gonna be tapped in for that. Uh, yeah, it's just like we could have did that in like a, an interview or backstage segment. You know, we didn't need to. We didn't need to take up you know time out in the ring to do that. I I, I get it. I get it. It was a real genuine, heartfelt thing between two guys. You know, I, that moment gave us a moment in return and started 2020. So. I, I, I can appreciate where they're coming from. It's just uh, this was kind of fan service for the Canadian crowd because th- that's their guy. 
Yeah. Basically. See, I ain't mad at it, but uh, here's what we wanted to talk about. We talked about this at the top of the show. <sighs> As the bloodline turns, shout out to my guys at First Black Champ Podcast. Uh, as the bloodline turns, Roman comes out there. And, uh, I got a new meme alert for Roman Reigns. That I told you so, joint. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I, I clipped that up. It's in my folder. Oh man. boy. Oh boy. <laughs> That's in my meme folder going forward. Uh, oh, but Jimmy Uso comes out there, and I guess uh, Jay Uso got to keep the music in the split because. Jay Uso, uh, excuse me, Jimmy Uso comes out there. And before he can say anything, here comes Jay. And Jay is just like, yep. before I whoop your ass and throw away 37 years of literal brotherhood, tell me right now. And all Jimmy Uso had to say was, I did it for the rock. Nah, it was pretty much, that was the energy he had. Whoa. So as I said last week, I'm gonna still let it play out and let it rock, but it's it's not looking good for me, man. Like this this wasn't this wasn't the way we follow up on that to get me to change my mind. It was crazy because like I let a couple days pass. So like around Wednesday, I was I was leaning towards like yo, I might have been tripping on Saturday. I might have been tripping on Sunday. But now it's it's not looking good to me no more. Uh I got you queued up, so should I, should I bring it in? Drop it. Mm. I'm upset. Oh, how man. you feel about Listen. this segment, man? I this this was Jay Uso ended up quitting his job, <laughs> quit on his family. <laughs> oh, and now you got the uh, I, I don't even know what to call him because, like, damn, you ain't been a a, a father for real. In the last like three months, but oh, this hey. guy's father is uh, is rumored to possibly be making an appearance at Payback. I don't think he is. I don't think he is either. Like but, he, he he retweeted something about like that it being the wrong uh, promoter or some saying something, whatever. Oh, um, it's too late nah, to apologize. It, it, it's far too late. You too you got late. President of the year. Yeah. Like we'll we'll still do the nominees, but you got it locked up by a nah, side. Yeah, I don't think he got peasant of the year, but he definitely got worst parent of the year locked up. Oh yeah, yeah, like yeah. You did, you did knocked off Ray Mysterio from his pedestal. Yeah, that, that <laughs> Ray Ray Mysterio handled his child at some point. It took a while, but it happened. Oh, uh, nah, man. I, when it comes to this, I, I thought I was pissed off after SummerSlam. I really did, and. It seemed like it was obvious the road to, to go down if you were going to do that ending. But then you gave me, I did it for you, bro. I did it for The Rock 2.0. Basically. Uh, why, why did we do this? Somebody needs to tell me why we did this. Like, I, I said I said the whole thing about the booking of SummerSlam already last week. Y'all go check that out. That was a separate rant. But if you weren't going to do this to set up the rivalry, a feud, something they said they wanted to do anyway, right? I, I'm sure, listen, it would be something to watch. I'd watch it. But now you come out here and you just, Jimmy just making excuses. Talking about, oh, I, I didn't want you to be corrupted. I don't want you to get this power and you turn into Roman Reigns and, and, and let it go to your head and be just like him. Really? He, let's just say for the sake of argument, let's just say he he did start feeling himself a little bit. He gets the championship and now all of a sudden he start acting different. Who is better suited to get his head straight on than his blood twin? Like right, you could have been a right hand man. Exactly. Like you are in a better position to steer that situation any way you so choose because of the connection that you have with him. That's something very few people in the world can even understand because there aren't, you know, that many people that can say they have an actual twin. You shared a womb with the man. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you was that concerned about it, you could have addressed it as soon as he won the match. 
You could have said, listen, you got this now. Do the right thing. Don't be like him. You you up here acting scared? That's what you're telling me? Uso, Uso's to me at no point have ever exhibited fear. Right. That's not that's not in y'all DNA. That's not in the family DNA. It's y'all not. don't do that. Only y'all don't person, run from nothing. Yeah, the only person that be running is Dwayne. Yeah. He just got a way of doing it. Right. He got, you know, he, he, <laughs> he, got, he, he got, got legitimate he got reasons. I'm about to say, he got the cachet to pull it off and, and, and you know, be slick about it. But anyway. I ain't saying, though, you, like I said a couple weeks ago, you don't got nothing going on now. It's, it's mad strikes going on. You can show up, Dwayne. Yeah. So your excuses ain't excuses no more. <laughs> right. Yeah, but I'm I digress. Like, dog, we, you did all of this just for Jay to come out. Not not say, hey, listen, he turns his back on his brother, but he's not going to fight his brother. He gave him a, a kick. That was that was the only thing I popped about in this whole segment was him kicking the shit out of Jay because yeah. Lord only knows somebody needed to do it. Yeah. But we're not setting up a feud. We're not taking this anywhere. It's Jay not is, right now. Jay is away. He's out the bloodline. He's out SmackDown. He's out of WWE. Uh, Jimmy is going wherever he's going. Roman, is going, none of the bloodline is going to be on SmackDown next week. So, I, this is going back to what I'm saying. Like DJ Paul might have to get peasant again. Cause what? What are you doing? What are you really doing? Like you, I I am not on the boat of letting this play out. I'm not. I honestly, I was shaky. I was on shaky ground after they they shattered my prophecy like that. The last. The last little little bit I had left was gonna be on SmackDown. Like, let me see what you do, and this is what you do. I ain't letting you play out. I'm not. My only Fair. concern with anything bloodline related is when Roman is gonna lose the title, which at this point I can only assume is at WrestleMania. So we on autopilot mode for the next where are we at? Eight months, seven and a half. Yeah. You know, it's gonna take a civil rights leader. I guess so. To to get the family back together. So how many royal families is there in wrestling? Mm-hmm. Wise I, man once said, a wise man once said that wrestling has more than one royal family. And it's not just the Anawais. Mm-hmm. It's not just the McMahons. It's only one person left. And that's the reason why I'm going to let it play out, because I, I did – say during our predictions for SummerSlam that I had Cody as the end point for Roman. Obviously, right now it's looking like that's not going to change, but as far as his bloodline storyline goes. Oh my god. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's not just, looking too hot. I don't, I don't I don't like it, man. I don't like it. Cuz it's like going forward, let's just say let's just say the cap artist maybe get something right and he got to take some time off and you know rest up what are you going to do on smackdown in the interim yeah you don't have anything to fill that void we know bobby and the street profits you know they 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 plotting to be the next people up but we just started that that. you know i'm saying we just started that we don't have that established to take spot yet so what are you going to do now that again why did we do this? You wasted three years of character development and story for the person who we thought the story was for. And then you just said, okay, so we're not going to segue that. We're not going to take, like, how do I, how, well, I want to segue this. So all the seasons of The Walking Dead hit their 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 breaking point, their, their end point, right? Mm-hmm. But now we got all these spinoffs. Jay was that that long term story, that main story with, with Roman. We didn't get the right conclusion to that, and now we're not getting the spinoff. So that's wasting time. That's wasting money. That's wasting energy. What are we doing it for? And now, like I said, you left a void because if the, if it's true, next couple of weeks of SmackDown not gonna have no bloodline, no Roman. No nothing. And 
we know where the mid card situation is at because that was a bad call. Like, right? The fuck are you doing, bro? Somebody got to explain it to me. You're close to you're close to getting SmackDown banned on my list. I'm telling you right now. Hey, I used to love me for SmackDown, man. Me too. Now y'all got Kevin Patrick on the show. It just... Like, y'all are tripping, Y'all, y'all man. took Bianca off the show for like a year. Yeah. That wasn't cool. And she she's hurt. Or I guess storyline hurt. I don't know. Yeah. What she got going on? Because they, they didn't see her. Um, but yeah, man, I don't, I'm just saying. I don't like it. I don't like need it. Some, need some star power. It might have to say, fuck that draft. Yeah. Get somebody over there that matter. Get judge. Ain't Judgment Day on SmackDown? No, nah, they're they're wrong. Are they on Raw? That's right. I'm tripping. My bad. Play but y'all stuff. might y'all might do one. Y'all of might those, have to get them on there though. Yeah, do one of them package deals and swap some shit around. Cause this ain't it, man. This ain't it. Judgment they get some of the best ratings too. They do. Might have to get them on there. Them L.A. Night. Gonna yeah. have to pick up the slack around this company for the time Ooh. being. That just reminded me. I do have a peasant of the week. Uh oh. I have one. And uh yeah, I I <sighs> LA Knight had a match. And it's top uh, dollar. Yeah, versus top dollar. And it led me to this. Drop that for me, bro. My pack in the edge, guess what? Peasants, you peasants. Michael Cole, bring that ass here. Michael Cole? Yeah. Hold on, we give it Cole? Oh, Michael Cole. Michael Cole. I know it's technically your kind of day off. You know, I know you be free flowing. There's two things I don't tolerate on here. There's bad bars and unnecessary hating. There's unnecessary, there's big hating that you're doing when it comes to top dollar got to stop. But that's your gimmick. You know what I'm saying? That's your gimmick. He do it with Bailey too. But then he yeah. said, you know what? It's the 50th anniversary of hip hop. And so I'm going to drop some bars. I don't <laughs> even remember what he said. I just remember it was terrible. It was some of the worst bars I've ever heard on live TV. Don't you ever do. I don't care if you ought to go to a, a GOAT announcer or in pro wrestling. Don't you ever do that again. Ever. Hey. Ain't nobody trying to hear that bullshit, oh, man. God. Tripping here. Tripping, like hey, see, Jr. Wouldn't to... do that. Hey, you so you ain't trying to hear this? Ain't the first time Michael Cole to drop some bars though, but he he did drop like a month or so ago. Do you tell you Michael Cole drop a tape? You ain't trying to hear? It? No, hell no. <laughs> oh, like I can I can appreciate him, you know, uh, trying to be cultured. That wasn't the way to do it. That wasn't the way to do it. Like you could have said something else about 50th you know, anniversary of hip hop. You could have said something different with, about that. But you out here using that to to big hate on top dollar and make say some corny shit. It's just no, no. Don't 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 do that no more. You got kids. They watch. I'm sure they. I'm sure they watch at some point in time. Don't do this. Hey, I, I need them to have a whole press conference, like 50 in game. It just had top dollar and cold. <laughs> just make up. No. Oh man. I need the top dollar ever drop a diss on Michael. He might have at some point. I don't know. I don't uh, he be dropping, you know, songs yeah. every Friday and shit. Yeah, I know, I know. Like that's that's his thing. I need if he hasn't, I need him to do it. Top top dollar, if you're hearing this, please give me like a Give me like a spool, a smooth fifteen on Michael Cole, you know what I'm saying? Something like that, something like. You said give him fifteen. You don't gotta, you don't gotta have the last bar. You you can keep that one. <laughs> you said give me fifteen, not sixteen. Give me fifteen. <laughs> oh man, hey I man. Just, oh, it was tripping. Hey, I w- wasn't expecting to give Michael Cole peasant of the week. Hey, we here. I, I had to do it. I, I heard hey. it. 
I heard it and I'm just like, oh hell no. Hey, you, I, I'm pretty sure you remember that Adrian Broner promo. Of course. You call me the can, man. Anybody <laughs> can get it. <laughs> hey Listen, man. man. I had I had to find something on this show that actually entertained me, and that did it. But damn it, I had to give you message regardless. Hey man, I'm rocking with it. Hey, but uh with that being said, we've reached the conclusion of our show here. I want to thank y'all if y'all been listening this far into it. Appreciate y'all. Had to make the show a little shorter than usual. Feel me? Mm-hmm. Shout out to uh, shout out to the basketball hall of fame. Yeah, yeah. That's uh some legends, bro. That's probably the most legendary class they've had in some time. And uh and Kobe Bryant and Kevin Garnett and Tim Duncan got inducted the same year, if I'm not mistaken. So like this class 2023, we got there's a lot of dope like international goats in this class though. Uh Dirk, probably the best international player ever. Uh Pau Gasol, my guy, two-time champion with my Lakers. Lost uh sure. lost a lot of uh gold medal games to Team USA. <laughs> hey, but hey, you came in second. Ain't nothing wrong with that. We was hey, just hey. better. We was just it's better. It's all good. It's all good. Tony Parker. I uh I didn't really have a lot of good things to say about Tony Parker till I watched his Netflix special. I was about to say I I, I can understand. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't the biggest Tony Parker fan. Uh similar to that, I wasn't the biggest Greg Popovich fan too. But he he wanted a goat, so he got in. Uh Dwayne Wade, he he getting his uh his orange jacket this weekend as well. Yes, and sir. then uh last but not least. From my Las Vegas Aces, our coach, Becky Hammond, y'all already know. Y'all watch the WNBA like I do. Becky Hammond, she, you know, disregard what she did with the Aces in her first year last year. She was a Hall of Famer anyway. (laughs) Like, you know, did her things with the, the San Antonio Silver Stars before they became the Aces. She was coaching with the Spurs. With Greg Popovich, so right, it's a good night for her, man. And then, of course, sure. what she did with the Aces, Coach of the Year, won a championship her first year, and we twenty five and three on the season. There you Insane go. work. So shout out to the Basketball Hall of Fame. Shout out to Terrence Bud Crawford. Uh, had a parade for him. You know, won undisputed a couple <laughs> weeks back. Yeah. Had a parade inside my city. <laughs> It was fun. I was uh I was getting real homesick watching, but it was dope. It was dope. Shout out to I ain't giving no shout out to the mayor, but shout out to uh Bud. <laughs> shout out to Bud Crawford and uh the, the mayor. They uh they basically sold some land to to Terrence Crawford for a dollar to build a bigger gym. Cause they What's up? yeah, I mean, listen, you got all these kids, you got a, probably a bunch of at you know, kids at risk. Of of becoming something that Bud almost became if yeah. he didn't have boxing. So it's uh it's good. It helps him get an opportunity. They talked about it's a large like waiting list for kids to get into the gym. So hopefully uh now they'll they'll be able to have somewhere to train at, have another facility. And mm-hmm. uh man, it's it's dope. It's dope to see. So that's what's up. I know it's long winded, but I just want to get my shout outs in. Plug your socials, Rick. We're gonna get up no out of here. No doubt. Y'all can find me at Recapper24 on Instagram and on Twitter. Uh, also, y'all can check out all the past episodes of the Havoc Hour where I talk sports and entertainment on all streaming platforms where you find Young Kings Wrestling, Google, Spotify, uh, Anchor, and the video versions are up on YouTube. Uh, tonight, I'm uh, I'm pulling double duty. We've got another episode of getting off. I had a I had a creative moment, you know what I'm saying? A little, uh, little brainchild I, I just dropped on on my, my core four fam. And... Uh, we're gonna do the top five essential slashers, our personal. Uh okay. I got I got I got the movies picked out. You know what I'm saying? So we just gonna rank them on the show tonight. That's gonna drop later. So uh well by the time this by the time this drops, it'll already be it'll already be done. But yeah, y'all can go check that out at getting off uh with my guy, Mr. Matt Ritter, over at Smacking the Raw Podcast as well. So yeah, y'all can check that out. And uh, so smacking it raw. I know they they moving to Saturdays. They they do double duty now. I I guess so. Okay. Guess, well, tonight anyway. Hey, at least tonight. Okay. Yeah. 
Y'all Michael Cole out here. Right. <laughs> shout out to y'all. Uh, shout out to Smackin' It Raw. Shout out to everybody. And uh, I am the Thespian TC Fontaine. If you want to follow me, I am on Instagram at tc.fontaine. I'm also on Instagram with my photography at foy.flix. Check out my stuff and check out everything Young Kings Wrestling at YK Wrestling. Subscribe to the YouTube. Subscribe to the Twitter. We don't got a subscription feature, but just follow us. Yes, sir. I, I ain't paying the five. I ain't getting no Twitter blue. Nah, man. No, no ain't X no premium. Way. Ain't no way. And y'all shouldn't get X premium neither. I'm just saying. If you marry. All right. If you get marry, it, don't get X premium. Especially if you share a, a, a bank account with your wife or whatever. It might just look <laughs> crazy when she look at the statement. And she see X premium for eight dollars. Like, oh, what you doing, fam? Yeah. We yeah, don't do that out right, here. Like, oh, even, one more shout out. Oh, go ahead, my bad. Even only, I was gonna say, even OnlyFans don't look that bad on the statement. Right. <laughs> like, like, you can you can talk that off, but X, nah, fam. Nah, <laughs> you in trouble. <laughs> uh, and then I, I want to give another shout out to my my people. Uh, my people, your people, our people, black people. I see how y'all was looking on that boat, on that boat dock over in Alabama. Oh, we didn't, we didn't talk about that. No, we didn't talk about that. <laughs> hey, yo. Uh, the fact that y'all was able to do that, ain't nobody die, ain't no guns come out. Just good mm-hmm. old-fashioned ancestral ass whippings. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I know man. y'all know that some ancestors was was laid on that land. Hey, Amen. Y'all Ooh. know that. If you know, you when, know. When I seen a dude swimming to to run up and give oh, the hands, yeah. I'm like, that that's gonna be a moment in time. Mm, mm, mm. History. Y'all was a little corny with them chair jokes though. Yeah. Them, Ooh, them, I mean, we know every time jokes. something pop off. We know every time something pop off, black people can't take nothing serious. Hell no. So it, it's always gonna be something in the mix that's gonna be like, all right, what you, what you talking about? Fam? Yeah, them, them chair jokes is looking like Kurt Hawkins record out here. <laughs> <laughs> looking real bad. Shout out to them. Shout out to them Ooh, black folks, man. No doubt. Y'all hey, right. run up, get done up. I'm with Facts. it. Hey, until next time, no. Uh I'm, I'm gonna let Trey Song say. Said I'll be back to hold you down. I don't want to leave But we got to go right now. We're going to be back next week with our anniversary. Yeah. Hip hop anniversary. We got a birthday party next week, dog. So don't yeah. miss it. We're going to hit y'all with another, another one. one. But until then, we out of here. Gone. Gone.